Well, I want to welcome you back again. I'm still picking through this backlog of wheels. Well, this week I've got a wheel that was sent up from New Mexico. We're going to get it unpackaged and just see what we've got cooking here. Well, in spite of the wreck, this really is a pretty nice old wheel. It has nice fine lines to it. You can tell that they're still original spokes. Got nice fine throats on them. Compared to this old wheel that we did earlier, pretty thick, heavy, blocky spokes, not much style. But this has a really nice old original style to it. So we're gonna kinda get it apart here and see if we can't put this thing back together again. Picked this up off the stand. I noticed it had a steel washer on the large side on the bell side of the boxing. This really should be leather. Steel isn't a good idea. Another thing I noticed when this wheel was put together, somebody was pretty heavy-handed with it. I've been asked in the past why I don't use a larger hammer when I set rivets, and this is why. Too large a hammer or too heavy a blow can bend the body of the rivet instead of mushrooming the head and that was the case when these rivets were set. Well, this buggy wheel has been changed to a little newer style of hard rubber. It has a flat rubber to it. And there's a spot where you can see it was drug sideways, probably in the wreck that started to pull the rubber up out of the channel iron. So while in some past videos you've watched me put hard rubber tires on buggy wheels, this time it's going to be the process of how do you take them off? You know there's got to be a joint somewhere, and there it is. Now inside this joint is two hard, high tensile strength wires. I'm going to take a cold chisel and see if I can't get them cut apart. It can be a rascal sometimes. In the process of doing this, I want to address a question or a comment that's come up different times when I'm putting rubber on. Why don't I put some type of adhesive or sealant on this joint? This is why. Uh, you remember here a couple, two, three, four weeks back, I did some hard rubber tires, and you see how I braze the ends together? Well, there's a braze job that causes the wire to stay stuck on one end, and it'll kind of pull in on the other. So this end that I can see the wires just flush on is the end where the weld is. 
I'm going to clamp it down tight and I'm going to stretch this out kind of like a rubber band as far as I can. And I'm going to kink it on the end of the wire and see if I can't get this to work forward. I got a little off camera here. But if I twist that, see that wire starts to work out. There you can see the brazing coming out on one wire. The second wire is a little more reluctant, but I think we can persuade it. One of the challenges of working on these horse-drawn carriages today is the variety of makers. So I'm constantly trying to match old spokes. So the new ones don't really always match just quite right. So I'll put an old one up against the new one and kind of figure out how I can make this shape a little closer. Now while I was handling these old spokes, kind of getting them fitted up a little bit, my hands started to tell me something that my eyes didn't see. You know a sarvan spoke is kind of shaped like an egg. There's one side that has kind of a, a sharp ridge down, not real sharp, but it's a definite ridge. And that edge is designed to have a little dish to it. You see how it kind of steps up off the bench. 
Well, these old spokes started to feel a little funny. Remember the stripe that was on the outside and the backside doesn't have a stripe? You can see here the egg has a, the point is up on the top right here. Well, I'm going to slow this down and let you see as we follow that down, it is actually on the back side of the spoke. The other side is the side that has the stripe, which was on the outside of the wheel. This spoke has been put in backwards or upside down. So, I started to inspect these a little closer. And this is what I found. Well, it's most likely these spokes are all of a hundred years old anyway. Most everything that comes in is of that vintage at least. So they've had the effects of tension and pressure and weather and they have bent and warped and given over time. So it's a little tough to tell solely off of the bend in the spokes. You can see there's some warp in these. It's when my hands feel for the top of the egg that it really tells me the most of just how these spokes were supposed to be. Now I know maybe this is a little difficult to pick up with the camera. So I'm going to take and set these spokes all in a line and I'm going to feel what is the top or the outside edge of the spoke? What is the top of the egg? And I'm going to put all the top of the eggs up. Then I'm going to show you what position these were in the wheel. They're kind of all mixed up, but look at what I found. Well, have you ever heard the phrase, you don't want to buy a car that was made on Friday? They seem to be, I don't know if this is true or not, but they sometimes are blamed to be the lemons. Uh, the workers in the assembly line aren't thinking about their, their job, maybe. They're looking for the weekend, and some bolts don't get put in, yada, yada, all this kind of stuff. This wheel, and I don't know about the whole buggy, but I imagine the whole set of wheels looks like it's kind of a Friday built set of wheels. About half of these spokes are in upside down. And it's just one of those lessons that, you know, this is probably a hundred year old wheel, but you know, people are people. Back then and even today, I have fixed a lot of, well, maybe I shouldn't say a lot. I have fixed a number of wheels that are built today, fairly modern, that I find this. Spokes are in haphazard, some right, some backwards. But it's not that common to find them in old original carriages. This is one that was one of those Friday wheels. When it goes home, it won't be that way, though. So let's go ahead and get this put back together and let's do it right this time. Well, generally when I'm using old fellies, putting it back on, I can see kind of the imprint where the egg is on the fellows. But since this one is kind of mixed up haphazard, I'm going to scrape through and I think this has got some blind rivets on it. And sure enough, you can see them right underneath the paint here. This is going to get repainted anyway, so I'm going to scratch this off. This is going to tell me what is the back side of the fellows and what is the right side to put them on.
the old rivet heads are a little smaller heads than the new one. So I gotta modify these two because this one has to match the other three.
You know, back in 1979, early 1980, I had an older wheelwright watching me do this rubber tire deal. And he just sat there and kind of watched, didn't say too much. And when I got done, he said, yep, after about a thousand wheels, you'll about have it figured out. Well, that thousand wheels has come and gone years and years ago. So you're kind of getting to be kind of that way too. You've watched me do this enough times. You've noticed that I've kind of just kind of blown through some of these steps. But you're getting to where you're familiar with them, which is a good thing. Once again, I appreciate you following along and thanks for watching.